Hello everyone and welcome back guys. Finally, finally to more of my F1 2018 AOR highlights. Obviously now it has been moved over to the second channel. You know, I got a few questions asking why I, you know, I have a league racing channel yet I wasn't uploading AOR highlights on it. So yeah, I decided to bring the AOR content over to here as well. I obviously had a, well, I say a little bit of a break air quotes. It was a sort of forced break where obviously my internet was out. But yeah, we're finally back. I finally got round for actually editing on my Canadian Grand Prix highlights here today for you guys. Really, really looking forward to this one. You know, coming back into Iowa, I felt fresh. I felt ready. Canada, one of my favourite tracks on the calendar. I felt motivated as well. I really, really wanted to try and get some points on the board after it. It's safe to say the first four rounds had been quite tough on me. Obviously, Australia, uh, we ended up actually disconnecting, rejoining, scoring a point, and then obviously subsequently not scoring that point because obviously we disconnected and rejoined. And uh, then Bahrain, obviously we had that weird spin near the start, just the like weird auto spin curb. Uh, Aus uh, China even, I should say. We obviously had the weird, um, well, we, we, we took the gamble on the tyres and safe to say that one didn't pay off. And then Baku, obviously last time out uh, in air quotes, obviously didn't quite go our way either. We had a bit of a desync crash uh, with one of the McLarens, I can't remember which one it was, off the top of my head. And honestly, looking back at uh, Baku, Looking back at Spain is usually a good track for myself and Monaco, you know, anything can happen at Monaco. I really felt like by this point of the season, I, I personally felt that, you know, points were definitely a possibility. You know, the aim was to come into Canada and finally try and get some points on the board, come back with a bit of a fresh start. So, yeah, as you can see, coming through the final corner, we were actually up at a P6 at that stage of the session. Very, very happy with that lap right at the end of the day. Just 12 thousandths of a second quicker than VSR Pinecone and P6 would actually be where we were able to hold on to at the end of qualifying so certainly very very happy with that result you can see Simon snuck into the 1 minute 6 is there a fantastic lap by him but he did have slipstream as well but yeah we were P6 ahead of Pinecone Jason and MVP0 as well as P1R Brown all very very tightly bunched you know all four, uh, five of us even separated by less than two tenths of a second so yeah very very tight but yeah we're starting P6 then for the Canadian Grand Prix, hopefully points can finally be a possibility here in the circuit Gilles Villeneuve. And yeah, let's move on then into the race. And as you can tell then, moving into the Canadian Grand Prix, it is a wet, wet affair. It was meant to be a wet to dry race overall, so certainly going to be a very, very interesting one. You know, changeable conditions and everything like that, we could be in for a very, very exciting race as we come through the final chicane on the formation lap. Not gonna lie, I felt confident in the dry, not so confident in the wet. It was meant to get dry about a third of the way into the race, but obviously as we've seen many times in the past, you know, it, it basically is just a lottery, to be honest with you. But as, yeah, as we line up then on the grid, ready for the Canadian Grand Prix, hoping that we can get off to a nice, clean, tidy start. We've got OMG, it's Joe, CRG, Evo, Leopard, Surprise, and Simon starting in at front of me here, but I can't imagine I'm really going to threaten those guys in the race. But here we are then on the grid, ready for the Canadian Grand Prix. It is five lights here, and it is lights out, and away we finally get going there. Off to actually a pretty poor start. Pretends to be shocked. I don't know what it is. I just cannot launch on this game, and that's going to give Pinecone already an opportunity in towards turn one there, but we're going to hang it right around his outside there. Almost got the inside of Joe there. That actually wasn't my intent at the start of the race. There, but he gives me a squeeze over the curb. A good bit of traction on the exit. A, a fair amount of opposite lock. It's safe to say there as well as I actually lock up the front brakes ever so slightly that I have to take to the grass through the next chicane there. Uh, just a little bit, but we do hold on to P6 off the start of the race. That Already the top four are starting to get away, but OMG, it's Joe. He's probably going to be able to hang on with those guys there. He's, you know, we sort of like that bit of a window between the top five and then I was just able to get sort of almost like best of the rest just in behind there. So I can't imagine I'm really going to be able to threaten these guys all too much in the race as we now come through the next game that Joe actually taking quite a lot of curb on the way through there but MVP0 now was up into P7 behind me and it wouldn't be too long until he was really really applying the pressure here he I must say his pace in the wet was absolutely phenomenal he had a huge amount of pace in the wet I think he was actually able to challenge up with the top guys there he's going to move to the inside of myself I wasn't expecting that one in towards the final chicane there we're not really going to be able to do too much to fight just look how brave he was on the brakes there. Fair play to MVP0. I'm into P6 of the Grand Prix. He goes back, drops myself down to P7. But still, I'm, as I said, all I want is points in this race. And that's going to be a reoccurring theme 
over the course of this evening as we come through turn one and turn two, get very, very close to him once more. But it would take us all the way onto lap eight before anything else would happen here. I, I must admit, I was I was causing a bit of a train at this stage of the day, but it was I just didn't want to take any risks. It was one of those horrible things where you know you're probably going a little less than your potential, but after all the bad luck in the opening few rounds of the season, I, I just wanted to finish and finish well in this one. We'll break down in towards the final chicane. They make a bit of a mistake. They run a little bit too deep on the way and have to use the engine brake to get the car scooped around, and that's going to give Pinecone an opportunity to the outside in towards turn one here, but I'm just going to break a little too late there, lock the rears as we come through turn one. I'm going to take evasive action there, don't want to take Pinecone off for an adventure with me. Pick up a 10 second time penalty, but we're going to try and negate the advantage. Give the place up to Pinecone there, and that's going to be us down to P8 of this race as we come through the next chicane here, and yeah. It was, obviously, I wasn't going to try and hold on to the place there. Pinecone was probably going to have it, and especially where I picked up the 10 second time penalty as well, I wasn't going to try and like walk away with it or anything like that, because ultimately, giving up 2 seconds is better than keeping the 10 second time penalty at the end of the day, but now we're under pressure from Cal Receive just behind me as well here, so clearly, you know, we've let one place through so far, we can't afford, it's, it's like a leaky bucket, we can afford to have one leak, but we can't just let everyone through at this stage of the day, we need to keep our pace up, keep the momentum, keep the rhythm here as we now break down in towards the hairpin here. And it's, it's actually a little bit of a Constantina effect there. I get a punt from Cal behind, but it wasn't his fault. There have been quite a few little, sort of little punts in towards each other, almost like domino effect in towards the final couple of corners there. But down this back straight once more here. Is Cal going to be able to get any sort of run? He's definitely gaining. We're going to try and bait a little bit defensive here. He's going to move to the outside, but nothing really he's going to be able to do there. Break a little bit too late. Through the final couple of corners there, and unfortunately, that's going to give Cal a very, very good run there around the outside. And there's going to be nothing we can do to try and defend from that one, and that's going to give Reynolds as well an opportunity in at Tal Ward's Tal Wonder. He's going to go up the inside. He punts me out wide. They're a little bit aggressive from him. That gives us nowhere to go through turn two there. And we're going to be side by side up the hill in Tal Ward's the first chicane of the lap. Who is going to come out on top there? I tried to keep me up, up the inside there, and Cali just comes across me. And just a tiny bit of contact there. We were lucky that we didn't actually get stuck behind him there as well. But yeah, I can only apologise to him for that one. But personally, from my thoughts and feelings, you know, he's... Yeah, but in all fairness, we've seen from his footage, he did cut the corner. As he'd cut the final chicane, which opened himself up the opportunity. Was very, very aggressive through turn one. And really, you know, I, I, was, I didn't try to late break or anything. I even broke a tiny bit earlier than I would normally. But yeah, he, he just turned in a little bit too much there. Unfortunate bit of contact for him, but luckily for me, we got out of that fairly unscathed on the whole, and it would take us all the way to lap 17. We wouldn't really be doing all too much. We'd sort of find ourselves in our own little operating window at this stage of the day here as we come in for my hopefully one and only pit stop of the Grand Prix. Hopefully it's a nice and tidy one. 2.7, that's okay on the whole there. Actually, we got very lucky that we got ahead of Zelshi. We could quite easily been held up by that one there as we come out of the pit lane now at the halfway stage of the Grand Prix. Jason Knight 7 F1 there. I think he actually got involved with the Reynolds incident. It's going to come out just in front of me here, but I didn't really want to threaten him. The tyres, you know, he was on quite worn tyres and as well as the fact obviously he'd have to pit again quite soon anyway. So really for me, it was just a fight that I didn't really need to get myself involved in at this stage of the racers because he just asking Jeff about what his tyres are like as well. But unfortunately for me, by the end of lap 23, you can see the pace was pretty much even here and the track had completely dried out. The changeable conditions had finally come and by the end of lap 23, we we're ready to make the stop onto dry there. So Jason actually got a little bit lucky and I think his tyres were probably going off quite soon after that. He'd, he'd been on them for 14, 15 laps, so he probably had a good couple more laps in them. But yeah, he's going to be able to come in and still survive on the, well, effectively, obviously, the two-stop now, but the one-stop in the rain there. But yeah, everyone now diving into the pit lane on the end of that lap. I know a couple of the guys behind me had actually made the gamble one lap earlier, so they clearly just got a little bit lucky with the way the timings had worked out there. You know, we were still holding on just behind Jason, still in the points at this stage of the day. There is, you know, light up the rear wheels once more as we come out of the pit lane. And now, again, I didn't really want to fight Jason here. All I wanted... Was, was just just a point. That's all I wanted in this Grand Prix. We had an 11 second gap to Zelchi here, but I knew, fortunately, he actually had a couple of penalties as well here. So it was going to be very, very tight between now and the end of this Grand Prix here as we come through the next couple of corners here, just following on Jason 
behind him. Nice and close. He's just... He's that bit quick for me. I'll openly admit that in this game as well. But yeah, you see, just asking Jeff behind me. The time last lap was a 1 minute 22.3. They have a time penalty of 3.0. So he's got, yeah, three seconds worth of time penalties as well here. But by lap 31, though, we were just really monitoring this gap between myself and Jason here. We've been able to build up to about four seconds. And the safety car has been deployed. Zelchi there has actually made a big, big mistake. Through the chicane there, I think he's clipped the wall on the outside and spam into the inside wall there. So that was not what he needed, but the safety car has been deployed. And honestly, I thought that was my race completely over here at this stage. Because, you know, I just felt everyone was going to bunch up. And that was unfortunately going to send me right to the rear of the field with our penalties there. But Jason's actually going to dive into the pit lane there. So not exactly what I was expecting, considering, you know, we've got three laps to go of the Grand Prix. The safety car isn't going to come out for its full window. It's only going to be out for one, maybe two laps overall. As you can see, not too sure why it's trying to pop a wheelie going up the hill there as well. But yeah, we're going to now move ourselves up back into P9 of this Grand Prix. And honestly, this actually worked out quite well for me because with the way everyone else bunched up in front, I was still able to run at pretty much 100% pace, completely under the safety car window here. And I was just about going to get close enough to the rest of the field by the time the safety car would come in on the end of lap 33 so they had two laps to go now okay, to, to the end of this Grand Prix and we were just in a comfortable little window by myself here as we come through the final came once more all we got to do now is keep it clean keep it on the road and we should be able to score our very first points in AOR tier one here so there's yellow flags out through turn one not too sure what that is all about there are big big battle going on in front of me as well but as we skip on now in towards the final couple of corners of the Grand Prix there will be a titanic three-way battle between Pineco and Rasteed and one of the McLarens there unfortunately for me I just wouldn't quite be able to get close enough to it but honestly for me I was okay with that MVP Zero actually runs deep into the hairpin so we're gonna have a drag race down in towards the final couple of corners of the race there but yeah for me in towards the final chicane of the lap it is finally going to be my first points in AOR Tier 1 and honestly after all the bad luck we'd experienced so far this year, I was certainly happy with any points we were able to get there. Take a nice tidy line through the final chicane, but there we are, CRG Evo actually comes through to win the race there ahead of Veloce Surprise as well with I think, was it Leopard in P3 at the end of the day? It might have been, or it might have been uh, OMG It's Joe there. There we go, OMG It's Joe, Simon and Leopard with Cal 6th, Pinecone 7 myself, 8th, Jason in 9th, and MVP 0 10th with Langman and Team Vodka Shot raining out the finishes there. Zelchi, Clone Troop, Brown, Cry Lockdown, Reynolds, and Ted all not making it through to the end of that race. But I can confirm, actually, after the race, the stewards did offer in favour of getting rid of my 10-second time penalty there. So that safety car has actually been really, really good to me at the end of the day there. That actually means... At the end of the Canadian Grand Prix, we went from P6 to P6. Eight points in the bag. That was certainly more than I was expecting at the end of the day. Really, really happy with that one overall. You know, really just... It was a good return, and it felt really good to finally get some points on the board. Obviously, at the time, I wasn't aware of how many points we would score. But yeah, eight points at the end of the day. With Evo, Surprise, Joe, Simon, Leopard, myself, Cal, Jason, Pinecone, and MVP Zero rounds at the top ten. Now, Langman, the only driver to remain... On the lead lap without scoring points in there. And Vodka shot at the end of the day. Had a little bit of a mare there. So he would come down uh, one lap down in P11. But there we are then guys. That has been the Canadian Grand Prix. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this video. Make sure you do subscribe if you're new around here as well. Finally we have scored points in air. Well I will hopefully bring you new air quotes highlights from France. Over the next couple of days as well. Obviously I want to try and get back into a good rhythm with these videos but yeah thank you all so much for watching make sure you do like and subscribe if you're new around here and i will hopefully see you guys next time for a brand new video